But the reason I wanted to bring, uh, bring these is to show you what, uh, what you need to do if you buy plants from other people. Um, all of these are from two different vendors from Arizona. This one came from, uh, what is his, uh, Eric Gu, uh, and I cannot remember the name of his nursery in Arizona. Um, and this, he bred this, this is one of his plants. And then these, there's a lady that I've, I think I've talked, uh, I've spoken uh, about Kelly McCracken, High Desert Orchids, yeah. Dash for Sale. Mm -hmm. And um, she sells really nice plants every Thursday at 7 o'clock. Uh, you can get on her live stream. And uh, so I've gotten some really neat things. And, uh, but again, she is an Arizona grower. So uh, these growers both have problems with humidity and they are heavy waterers. So, and, um, and when I got them, some of them were in bud. So I catered to my desire to want a flower more than my desire to have a healthy plant, apparently, this time. As a result, I have caused damage to all three of these plants. And uh, so I got this one last year. And, uh, and the thing about it is, is that when I got this, this plastic pot, which is the soft pot that a lot of the Taiwanese, a lot of professional growers use, very soft. And um, so the thing is, is that this was burnt, it was just big bulging and you couldn't remove it like I did because there were so many roots. And, but I had spikes coming out on it. And so instead of repotting it immediately and bringing new fresh media and being assured that, you know, the health of the plant would be continued, I catered to my desire to want to see what this darn thing looked like when it was in bloom, and you know, is it you know is it going to look like what I paid for? And as a result, and it bloomed, and I enjoyed it immensely. And did I, and did I uh, change it? No, <coughs> it just put out another spike. Well, meanwhile, because I did that, I've lost probably about seventy-five percent of my roots. I have an aerial root, I have some on the top that are above the media. This media is tight as it can be. And so, I have, and the reason I brought this is because it has five flowers, two buds, and I'm cutting them off tonight. <gasps> because I have to... Shocking! <laughs> yes! We're not ready! <laughs> we weren't ready for that! <laughs> And the reason I'm doing, well, the thing is, is that flowers are, flowers are the sexual part of, you know, of reproduction, and I need vegetation. I need root growth, because if this is what a year and a half can do, this is, this plant's desperate attempt to save itself. And, I mean, I, when I first got this, these leaves were full and flat and shiny, and now I can see ridges. And that's because it's not because because it's not getting enough moisture from these few roots that it has. I could take one of those and put it in some water. From the lower leaves, so the lower leaves are, and they are older, of course, but they're accelerated. It's just overnight they've just started going. And uh, I also noticed the color change. This one, one reason that this attracted me is that this has a clear white center. So you have yellow, white, and that, and this pink, you know, this magenta. Well, it's the color has even changed, and I mean, and so last year when I bloomed, the white center was there. So, like I said, this plant has, if you see it, you can see how it just looks like it has tiny ridges, and they weren't there last year. This was just a flat leaf surface. So this isn't getting enough water. It's not absorbing enough nutrients, and so I need roots. Without roots, you don't want a plant. You fertilize it. Huh? You fertilize it? I did fertilize it, yes. But uh, apparently when I fertilized it, the roots were already t too far gone, and so it's not absorbing it. So, like I said, so this is going to be torn apart, replanted, put out in the heat, because this is the Bellinia type, or the Violacea type of Phalaenopsis, it's the summer blooming, and they, uh, they tend to like heat and humidity, uh, brighter light more than uh, regular fells you get out of a big box store. So the pass I'm the most proud of, believe it or not, because this is the smallest paffy petalum in my collection, and it is uh, Leucocopath leucochylum times thionum. Thionum is a recently discovered species. It looks like a little nivium, 
take a nevium. A nevium is just basically a white path that you know has a flower about this big. This one and, uh, and the, this one is naturally smaller; is about half the size of the nevium, and the plant size is is less than half the nevium. And the thing about it is, is that uh, anything you mix that you breed with this, it brings down the plant size. I have been, I have Thianum cross with Rothschildianum. I look forward to that one in six years. Yeah. <laughs> so, but this one, I think this bud developed over two and a half months. It's small and it grows so Steve? small. And uh, and this one, so if I hadn't repotted this, say it hadn't been uh, in bud at the time, and I, you know, I would, was willing to take the chance. I might not have had the leaf damage, and this might be even flat. See, so, yeah, I mean, you know, judges like, you know, when they look at this, it's cute, but for them, they want to see a flat flower, and this one hasn't opened. And that could be because, again, it didn't have enough water during the development stage. So I'll have to go and bloom this again to find out if I screwed it up, or if this is the extent that it can open, but either way, well, those flowers last forever long. Okay. I don't know. So, and, but I want the plant to be around next year, so I'm sacrificing it's mm -hmm. showing. Because if I keep those flowers on there, it's not going to survive. Mm -hmm. So, and I'd rather have the plant. Yes. <laughs> a Bialara? So it's what? It's beautiful. Big shot, big panther? Mm -hmm. Is that Valentinia or is that this a... Is. This one is. That, that's a Valentinia? Mm -hmm. Is that a species? No, it's a primary hybrid, but uh, but I just got that, so that's how it came. Uh, Quite survey and something like that. Why? Because if you touch it, you may miss it up. This looks kind of brassy. Of, of you should know that from the lands what working me. It's Bolera. Oh, Bolera. Mm. So is that mixed with? Something that's like this is beautiful. Um, God, that's one of those where it's like a complex. Yeah, it's a yeah. family. Like that looks like it's a mix of like yeah. all the yeah. 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 I have to get this in my collection. Yeah. 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 Older gentleman named Tom, and neither Glenn nor I can remember his last name. I know I have it written down at home, and Glenn just said he died recently, so I said, felt bad about that. But anyway, this is exciting to me. First of all, it's the most fragrant thing in the world. I'm going to pass it around. It's got a little tiny bit of fragrance left, but in the morning it will fill a room without even trying. It's amazing. But anyway, it bloomed in March. I divided it in June. The, bait, the division is almost as big as that. And look what it did. I'm like, ooh, that's so exciting. Yeah, it's very cool. That's gorgeous. Huh?